So here's what we're going to learn today. Here's what every farm that I've seen observe, except for David's and Pat and these guys here. When we plant our annual crops, what do we have here in the spring? Nothing growing. Winter, nothing growing. We have leak, energy leak, nutrient leak, energy leak, nutrient leak. Our job is to cover those energy and nutrient leaks. We're going to show you that. We're using these multi-species cover crops, and Dave's going to talk more about them. I'm just going to show you some of this equipment we're using. Here's how we're going to start implementing it. I want you to write this down. Go to YouTube and type Virginia Tech No-Till Potato Planter. I don't know if you've seen this, Pat. Multi-species cover crop. Look at that potato transplanter. They plant the potatoes right in there. They run the filet more to terminate the cover. And then it comes out of that heavy residue. By doing that, no-till potatoes have reduced the problems with Colorado potato beetle and increased the yield by 17%. Wow. Yeah. Virginia Tech. How about this? Now, when I show that, what is that, audience? What is it? A sprayer. You know what pasta, when I said that in front of pasta, somebody yelled, that's a cancer machine. <laughs> and everybody starts laughing. I said, yeah, you know what that cancer machine does? It not only sprays, but it drops cover crop seed on standing corn. And the audience goes, oh, <laughs> we didn't know that. Look at that. Now, here's where David gets all excited. I get excited about the biology. So does David, but look at it. A ladder on top of the other ladder. <laughs> Why would farmers spend two or three, four hundred thousand? How much is that machine, Dave? About four hundred thousand? Why would they do that? For this. Yep. Standing corn, I got cover crop, and I, don't, I stopped my leak, and I'm capturing energy into the winter. Let me show you what that is. That's a veggie no-till tomato planter. Yep. Oh, no, I got to put it in plastic, and I got to till the snot out of it. No, you don't. Dave's going to show you how we can do no-till tomatoes with cereal rye and get better results. Ray McCormick who came back from North Dakota. That is a Gandy seed box as he's harvesting corn. He's dropping cover crop seed. Very cool. Look at this big farmer in northern Pennsylvania. Lucas Griswold did that on 1,200 acres. Neighbors said, you're an idiot. You're going to have problems with disease. You're going to have army worms, blah, blah, blah. Look at that field. Look at the slope. You want to see the slope? How tall are those bins, Dave? About 100 feet, 70, 60, 70 feet. Look how much slope. What if he was an organic farmer? It washed off. Do you see what I'm saying? Be careful with your tools. We would love to get to our, eventually, we don't have to buy any inputs. I don't want them. Look at the corn popping right out of there. 190 bushel corn, Pat. This year's was 220. No-till tobacco. Kentucky. Very cool. Now look at, we'll take it, that is my garden. Today, I'm going to show you my pieces of equipment that I use. That's my roller. <laughs> my wife's, no, my daughter's car. It's a Jetta diesel. She was not happy. I don't understand. I said, daughter, let me use your car. My lawnmower died. Carburetor went out. So I said, daughter, can I use you to roll down my cover crop? You know why I show this? Because farmer says, well, I don't have the tool. I don't have the equipment. Blah, blah, blah. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I just love that. That's my garden spot. And I roll the same direction. That's right. Look at this. This is love. I posted on YouTube, got a lot of hits. I wonder why. And there's my, there's my multi, there's my grazers. The Rhodesian's going crazy. Now, I'm going to show you my planter. David made that for me. That's my diesel tractor. Look at this little boy play with the big boys. 
That is a no-till corn planter. David made it from my garden. He took a regular no-till planter from an old, cut it, got the whole unit, got a three-point hitch. My lawnmower's got a, my lawnmower has the ability to have a three-point hitch and it's got a PTO. Now I'm gonna plant straight into that green. Dave's gonna show you some slides. Oh, by the way, that goes right behind an ATV. That's a no-till uh, soybean, corn. What else can it plant, Dave? Cover crop. Cover crop, look at that. It's got a little, that's 1,200 bucks. Look at the results. <laughs> and the corn <laughs> pops right out of there. Dave's gonna show you some more. We did this in farmers in North Carolina. Our tobacco, look at our mix out of cotton. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the soil temperatures. Bare ground, 92 degrees, oh, wow. 77 degrees. And the corn, soybean popped right out of there, out of that heavy residue. Now, we're gonna talk about grazing real quick, and then we're gonna rush by, and then I'm gonna give it to Dave. Folks, I grew up in New Mexico. I grew up in the Rockies between Santa Fe. There's a county called Archuleta County in Colorado. Been there for 500 years. I went to school at New Mexico State. I want you to look. I was born in 61. I never saw this. This is what I saw when I went to school. Bare soils, evasive mesquite. I never knew the majority of New Mexico was range. It was native prairies. This is it now. Now, I'm gonna show you another biomimicry strategy for your operation. But look what happens when scientists say, let's take the animals out. Blame the tool, it's not the tool. Understanding of the producer. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna run our animals like buffalo. The pattern's there. Let me show you what the buffalo do. We're running sheep, cows, pigs, in high density, short duration. I want them to group them up tight because I want them to stomp in the material. We want them to be less selective. I want manure distribution, pie here, pie here. I don't want a cow pie at the end of the, of the door. Why not? You got a lot of bare ground, you didn't touch. There's a reason why cow, why did the buffalo group up, audience, tightly? Predators. So what predator are we gonna use? The hot wire, okay? We're gonna group them up tight. You're not gonna change the number of animals, you're gonna change the density. This is the typical pastures I see all over the country, all overgrazed. We're gonna go from there, to there, to there. Wow. And we're gonna move them frequently. And by the time they come around, you've given long recoveries. It takes management. And we have built organic matter, we're grouping them tight like buffalo. And we're changing the biology. What is that? This will give you how severe, that's North Dakota Gabe Brown. I said, Pat, we gotta get Gabe down here. But what is that? I thought it was black pipe. You know what that is? Cows, I call North Dakota the tundra. It is so cold, the snot freezes to your face. You run from building to building in the winter. Remember when we went on to speak in the winter there? I said, Gabe, don't your cows, are you worried some will die? I said, if some die, I improve the genetic pool. <laughs> cows have to earn the way. Look how beautiful those animals are. He's got 5,000 acres. He's got 300 cows. He can let the cows run all over the place. Look how tight he groups those. Those are multi-species cover crops, grazing them, gaining two to three and a half pounds per day. Do you see why he no longer buys chemical nitrogen fertilizer? He's no-till rights into that. So we want to do this. That's the manure distribution. I look at your pastures. I want to see that. I can tell if you're overgrazing, if you have the proper manure distribution. If you're not mimicking the buffalo, you're gonna have problems with your pasture, and then you'll go buy fertilizer because you're overgrazed it. Now look at here. There's Gabe. There's the, his tool, tillage machine. Here's his predator. 
That is called a bat latch. $400. It's got a timer. It's solar powered. It's got an alarm. Cows hear the buzzer. Bungee cord is released. The cows move to the next paddock by themselves. Absolutely. Look at that. He no longer uses Ivomec or any of these for parasites or for any of the flies. Because once he did that, the cowbirds came back and they started taking care of it. Guess what else he does? And this is what Pat and them were talking of doing. Look how, look how quick he sets up his paddocks. Him and his son, one hour, he's done for the day. That's how your pastor should be run. And then he uses, follows it up with this. Chickens. Andy, what follows the giant herbivores in the Serengeti and the buffalo? The birds. The birds. <sighs> <sighs> it's that simple. Look at here. On the back, on the bottom, he's removed the floor. And he's got a metal crate so that the manure falls right through the crate. He's got a water tank with a quick coupler. And he's got the nesting box inside and an automatic gate opener. And he's getting $4 a dozen, $5 to $6 a pound. He cannot keep up. I said, one day he said he saw a coyote waiting for the door to open for that chicken. He goes, well, what happened to him, Gabe? He said, well, he died of lead poisoning. <laughs> Get it? No. He said, sometimes you lose some. But he's very careful about hurting any of the predators because remember, those predators eat mice and all the other things that could be a problem, voles. Now, guess what we did? Here's an exciting catch. Anybody hay here? Anybody runs hay? Nobody's going to admit it now, are you? <laughs> After I diss hay, right? <laughs> Think about this. This is exciting news. Jerry Down, one of the you know Jerry. This year, this last two years, no longer feeds hay in North Dakota in the winters. Oh you know how he's doing it? North Dakota State ran the number, saved 88 cents a day. For five and a half months, he did not feed hay. He saved $58,000 by doing this. Covers. Doing covers, one acre of covers, Pat, for every cow. Let the cows graze it on the tundra. Look at the, then they ran the numbers, 14% crude protein on those standing covers. No baling, no having to on, run the bales, everything was done there. Look at that, cows have legs, look at that. Everybody on the farm works. This is not, you're not running a bread and breakfast. Cows have legs. Now does, um does he rotate them as much when he's got them set on that? Oh, absolutely, because you're going to give them an acre per day. Okay. So you've got 400 cows, you need 400 acres of that multi-species mixes out there that you're going to save to graze, okay? Look how beautiful they do. Pigs! Oh, yeah. Those pigs are bringing in four times the market value by Chicago because they're grazing on those mixes. Now we're gonna go, I'm gonna show you how severe the conditions, got a couple more slides and today we're gonna send it to you. Chihuahua, Mexico, how many been in Chihuahua, Mexico? Severe austere conditions, only eight to 10 inches. You think farming's hard here? This is a joke, that's hard. No water. Let me show you their soil, the soil conditions over there. They're running cows like buffalo, Look what happens before with the regular type of grazing, continuous, without cattle. You can't see the difference. Now look what happens when you run the cows like buffalo. You see the mesquite getting choked out by the grass. Eight inches of rain. Look at the cactus being choked out. How many of you have read Masanubu Fukuoka? Did I say I put you that one up? He really believed there was no such thing as deserts. He believes they're all man-made. I know that gives a lot of credence to his argument. This is Mark Brownlee from Ohio, uh, Missouri. We're grazing grasses this tall. We used to graze them from here to here. Uh-uh, we're changing that. Look what happens with multi... Sumix, the common weed over there. Look what happens when you run 200,000 cows per the acre. 
I mean, 200,000 pounds to the acre. Weeds, weeds be gone. No spraying. Group the animals tightly together. That is a native prairie that came back. That used to be infested by fescue. Mob grazing for three or four years. I took that picture. The warm seasons prairie came back on its own. We brought ecological memory back. No, that's uh, Mark Brownlee. This is the neighbors during the 2011 drought, haying and pasturing like they typically do during the severe drought. Here's Mark's. Mark calls me and says, Ray, I get it. I said, what did you get, Mark? It's about the soil. I said, it's about all of it connected, running biomimicry. Okay? Now, let's go here, and then we'll wrap it up. Give it to Dave. And to me, oh, we got to do this pasture cropping real quick. This is pasture cropping. We are getting our no-till planters and planting into standing fescue. We graze the fescue, we'll get the mowing, and then we'll order some multi-species mixes. And look at the cows, we'll get 12 to 14,000 pounds of biomass. No fertilizer, no herbicide. The cows were scared to get in there. We almost, this happened in North Carolina, in Summerfield. Yeah. We almost ran, Mark, one cow per one acre. If we had one more rain, we would have done it. Multi-species cover crops into standing pastures. We get our no-till planter, put these multi-species mixes, and we get all this biomass. Beautiful pasture cropping. You know where we learned this from? Australia. Australia. He got to meet him, Colin Sice. Farmer's been doing this for years. So, my buddy in Louisiana got rid of his hay equipment. He's going right into Bahia grass. Look at his cool season mixes. Louisiana. Came to one of my classes. There he is, his partner. Look at those mixes we're going to see today. Isn't that beautiful? Look at Tom Middlecheck, Missouri. Mob grazing, two cows, five acres. It's not number, it's not acres. Understanding and density, okay? We're doing it with sheep. And one, the last slide, I promise Dave, and I'm done. And I gotta land up with my last slide. And then we're gonna go to the field, we're gonna have Dave speak, and then we're gonna do a, show you how to do some of the mixes. I am personally convinced this is how we're gonna solve our problems, folks. I saw this from Jerry. Jerry's a good friend of died, passed away, and I'm gonna miss him. And when I saw this slide, I said, this is where, see, we think that pure science is gonna fix our problems. I love science. I'm a big science geek. Science, I know, science is the lowest form of knowledge. It just tells you about your surroundings. But it does not give you understanding, it does not give you wisdom. Until we understand, we will only conserve only what we love, we will love only what we understand, and we will only understand what we are taught. Folks, it's about connecting all of us, all of it together. It's about understanding community. We're gonna fix this by teaching like today. Teaching one mind at a time and helping our producers because I am tired of my producers going broke. I've been, I have been losing producers through the years in my 30 years career. Our water is still not getting clean and our producers are going broke. Our producers have ended up being tenant farmers. No more. You guys work too hard, you take too much risk. If you mimic nature and you follow the principles we'll be talking today and what you're gonna learn, we're gonna be able to wean you off some of your costly inputs. Does that make sense? I'm going to tell you, every farmer that has been to this workshop, he says, now this Ray makes sense, using nature as a mentor. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah you guys, thanks for coming.